If you look at a lot of ancient civilizations, they worshiped the sharks. They were like their gods. But then some silly movies came out creating fictitious stories about sharks that have territories and are lurking around for people. And we know from our work that is just not the case. Hey everybody, Chris Fisher here, founding chairman of OSEARCH. We're preparing to head out on our 38th expedition in New England to tag and track great white sharks in an effort to make sure they have a bright future and there's lots of food in the Atlantic Ocean for our grandkids. I'm here to debunk some ocean myths. The ocean can absorb anything. The ocean is absorbing a lot of things that we put into the environment. CO2, a lot of plastic, and it definitely has a finite ability to be able to handle all the stuff we're throwing at it. One of the biggest misconceptions we face around this is the concept of these gyres in the ocean or the Pacific garbage patch. In fact, there are five gyres around the world in the ocean that are all collecting debris. Now, people think you're going to drive out there and you're going to see an island full of garbage. That's simply not the case. So you got to think about it more like a big swirling bowl of pea soup. And the capacity to clean that up has not been discovered yet because the plastic is so small and it is so vast that filtering it out would require filtering out all the life that's in the ocean in that area as well. And it's tough to just grab and get it out of the water. We got real problems when it comes to plastics and this is something every single one of us can contribute to the solution. No more single use plastic bottles. Look after your plastic, make sure it's recycled and make sure it's stays on land. And I hate to be the downer, but no more balloons at the birthday parties. We find them scattered all over the ocean. When they get free from people, they drift out, end up on the ocean. And then a poor turtle thinks it's something like it can eat and it does bad things to turtles and ends up polluting the future. Plastic is one of the single biggest threats to the future of the ocean. Sharks are better dead than alive. Replace that fear with facts. Sharks are the key to the future abundance of the ocean. They prevent the second tier of the food chain from exploding and wiping out all the fish we need to eat. An apex predator is the top of the food chain. They prevent the second tier of the food chain from running wild and consuming everything below them. So everything is connected and the apex predator sets the tone for the system. When you lose that predator, you lose the system. White sharks have been around for millions of years. How have they survived that long? How how have they evolved to heal wounds rapidly because they have very violent lives? We're doing a lot of work on the ship where we take the bacteria off white sharks and we're developing new antibiotics for things like staph and MRSA. Not many things have survived on Earth for millions of years. And if we can learn how they've done that, it could have tremendous medical benefits for humans. The Bermuda Triangle is an actual phenomenon. I don't know what's going on there. We spent a little bit of time in that water on the edges of the Bermuda Triangle and we've never seen anything happen, but there seems to be too many crazy stories over too long a period of time to not wonder about what's going on in the Bermuda Triangle. Maybe it's beyond all of what we know and there is no natural explanation. Sharks can smell blood from a mile away. We work on the ocean all over the world. If it were that easy to attract sharks, we would have them swimming right up to our research ship and we will be able to tag as many as we like quickly for our science teams. Most of the time when there's a shark-human interaction, it's just mistaken identity because we put on a wetsuit and we're swimming with seals and we fool them. Once they realize they've touched the wrong thing, they swim off. So being worried about sharks or a shark interaction is something that doesn't really make any sense. If you're going down to the ocean and you're wondering if sharks are around, it's a very simple thing to figure out. Take a look at the ocean. If there's a lot of birds diving on bait and there's game fish eating the bait and there's seals and dolphins eating those game fish, the sharks are gonna be there. The food chain is going off right before your very eyes. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Unfortunately, it is totally possible to overfish the ocean. As we've developed bigger and bigger scale around our fishing operations, we are seeing the type of gear that can absolutely wipe out fish stocks. With the development of super long lines, mega trawlers, and massive seining nets, we now know we do have the capacity to tap the ocean out at a level beyond which it can reproduce itself. Just to give you an idea on how this works, what you're going for is sustainability. That means we harvest enough food for people to eat, 
but we leave enough fish in the water that they can make more fish. So we can do the same thing the following year. Now there's certain species that it's easier to do that with, but if you think about a white shark, if you start taking any of those, they have to live 20 years before they can have babies. This type of animal can't handle any pressure because it doesn't live long enough to replace itself if you're over harvesting it. There's lots of good ways to restore fish populations. Number one, we can use things like slot limits. You can only catch fish of a certain size. That means you can't catch the babies and you can't catch the big ones. The funniest thing about fishing is people always wanna go out and catch the big one. That's not the one you wanna take home. Oftentimes that's not the one that even tastes the best. You wanna let the big ones go. That's our brood stock. They make lots of babies. If you wanna take one home for your family, take a nice small one home. Anytime you overfish one species of fish in the food web, it affects everything because it's all connected. You overfish one species, the thing that they used to eat, maybe it was jellyfish, explode in numbers because nothing's eating them anymore. Then you end up with an ocean full of jellyfish. The idea that there's an unlimited amount of fish and we can't overfish it in the ocean might have been true 100 years ago, but it is no longer true today. The Great Barrier Reef is dead. While the Great Barrier Reef is struggling, there are many, many people doing great work to help restore it. One of the things you'll see when you see a dead reef is it lacks all the colors, it lacks all the life. When you see an abundant reef, like a place like Ningaloo Reef off of Northwestern Australia. It's full of colors, full of fishes of all size. There are also marine mammals. It is possible to bring the reefs back. There's great projects in Florida, bringing back the coral reefs of the Keys. And there's great projects in Australia doing the same thing in the Great Barrier Reef. One of the things we should all do if we wanna help out our coral reefs around the world is make sure we use reef-friendly sunscreen. These sunscreens don't have any chemicals in it that will hurt the reef. Whales can hear each other from thousands of miles away. One thing we do know is whales do have the capacity to communicate across very large areas. Different whale species have different sounds that they make and sometimes they can determine by a given sound what individual of that species it is. Like humans, they all got their own tone and their own story to tell. The ocean is largely unexplored. Much of the very deep of the ocean is unexplored, but there are lots of parts of the ocean that have been well explored, especially those parts that are around the surface. So you gotta think about the ocean almost like you think about land. There are mountains in the ocean, there are valleys in the ocean, there are rivers in the ocean, some of our great currents like the Gulf Stream or the Agullus Current in Africa. The seafloor is not flat. When you go down to the ocean bottom, you have all sorts of different structures. You have continental shelves that drop off into the ocean abyss. There are mountain ranges everywhere, valleys throughout the bottom of the ocean. There are certainly a lot of species that are yet to be discovered in the ocean, most of which are in the very deep, deep ocean. But don't get all carried away. There's no giant creatures down there like a megalodon or something else that you might see in the movies. You can swim against a rip current. Well, while you might be able to swim against a rip current, you're probably not gonna make it back to shore. You're just gonna get real tired and washed out to sea. Rip currents are really dangerous. If you spend a little time looking at the ocean before you can get in, you can avoid them most all the time. But if you get caught up in one, don't swim against the current. Swim across it till you come out of it and then swim on into the beach. A rip current or a rip tide is when two currents collide on the beach and then they both turn against each other and push straight out to sea. It's very, very powerful and they're typically not that wide. It's like a little narrow river shooting out into the ocean right off the beach because of the collision of these two currents. Most of the time you can see rip currents from the beach. When the two currents, maybe one coming down the beach and one coming up collide, they both bend off each other and push out to sea. Most of the time when you see that, they're sucking out a lot of sand and there's also sometimes foam in the water. Remember when you head to the ocean that once you're two or three feet into the water, you are deep into the wilderness. So make sure you look at the ocean. If you see a lot of jellyfish, you may want to avoid that area. If there's huge waves and rip currents, not a good place to go swimming. And even if there's just a lot of bait, seals and birds diving, there's likely going to be sharks in that area. Look for quiet places where the waves aren't too big and there's not a lot of life in the area. Thanks so much for tuning in to Myth Busting. Remember, we're just passengers on this planet. 
And the ocean is the primary regulator of our planet. And all the fish and animals that live in it, they are the crew. They are maintaining the very system that we all depend on to live. Let's be responsible passengers. And let's make sure all our great-grandchildren and future generations have a smooth ride as well. And that's only going to happen with a clean ocean that's full of fish.